And the Prime Minister says there is some evidence that the new variant of coronavirus spreading across the UK could be more deadly than the original strain. Government scientists said for men in their 60s out of every 1,000, around 10 infected with the old virus would be expected to die. But with the new variant, that number has now risen to 13 or 14. The government's chief scientific advisor, Sir Patrick Vallance, said there's a lot of uncertainty around the numbers, but it is of concern. There was good news on the vaccination programme, with a record number, more than 400,000 first doses administered in the past 24 hours. But Boris Johnson warned that the infection rate is still forbiddingly high, and he said he can't consider lifting restrictions in England until the vaccination programmes are working. With more, here's our health editor, Hugh Pym. It's been another frantic week for hospitals like this one at Clacton in Essex. More COVID beds have been set up to try to meet the surge in patient numbers. While most pull through, some don't. Now there's news that a new variant of the virus, which first spread in the southeast of England, could be more deadly than the first strain. We've been informed today that in addition to spreading more quickly, it also now appears that there is some evidence that the new variant the variant that was first identified in London and the South East, may be associated with a higher degree of mortality. In the light of the new information, do you expect the daily reported death toll to carry on rising for longer than you'd first thought and then fall more slowly? The death rate's awful and, and it's going to stay, I'm afraid, high for a little while before it starts coming down. That was always what was predicted from the shape of this, as, as Chris has said, and I think the information about the new variant doesn't change that. Not entirely sure. He said there was still uncertainty about the death rate with the new variant and more research was needed. Which is all I had. My, my dads have already passed away and me and my mum, we were the closest. Eleanor's mother, Sandra, died with COVID in hospital last week. She was 61 and had an existing health condition. Eleanor says her mum took every precaution. Mum was doing everything she needed to do. You know, she wasn't going out unnecessarily. She was always, you know, sanitising, wearing her mask. Because I'm one of them people that thought it wouldn't touch my family. But here I am, absolutely devastated and without my mum. So what's the outlook for new cases? A study by the Office for National Statistics does random testing and includes people who don't know they have the virus as well as those with symptoms. The latest survey of community infections by the ONS suggests that in England last week, one in 55 had the virus, with case rates having decreased. In Wales, it was one in 70, with rates levelling off. In Scotland, one in 100, again, with case rates having levelled off. In Northern Ireland, one in 60 had the virus, with rates increasing. The R number range, anything above one, suggests the virus is accelerating, was between 0.8 and 1, lower than the previous estimate. This week, the government tightened border controls and quarantine rules to try to limit the risk of new variants getting into the UK. Crowded scenes like this at Heathrow today will no doubt fuel the debate on whether further measures are needed. A new government ad campaign launched this evening aims to ram home the message to the public of the extreme pressures on the NHS and the impact of the virus. And Hugh is with me now. So the UK's new coronavirus variant, we've got new research on that. How worried should people be? Well, Sophie, health officials have been stressing this evening that this is very preliminary research. More data needs to be collected. Sir Patrick Vallance made that point. It needs to be monitored. But he did say it was potentially a concern, though not at the moment for anyone to get uh, especially worried about it. It was something that I think they felt they had to get out there so people knew what this new variant was looking like in terms of the mortality risk. Better analysis, though, in terms of a more positive story, comes on the vaccines with a suggestion by Sir Patrick Valance that actually they're quite effective against this new variant as much as they are about the old strain of the virus, which is reassuring. But he did go on to say that in terms of other variants, the Brazilian and the South African variant, there was a potential issue about the vaccines not being as effective as they might be, though again, more research is needed on that. And there's good news on the, the vaccination programme with millions of people now being vaccinated. But there's pressure on the government tonight over the second jab for the Pfizer 
vaccine? Yes, originally when Pfizer was approved in early December, there was said to be, there was supposed to be a three-week gap between the first dose and the second. That was all agreed. Then when Oxford AstraZeneca was approved at the end of December, the policy changed. So there would be up to 12 weeks between doses. The argument being made, and Chris Whitty made it again today, that it was much better to vaccinate as many people as possible, uh, double the number, and actually the greater amount of protection was with that first dose. But the British Medical Association representing doctors says it's increasingly concerned about this. The association says it's out of line with other international practice, including the recommendations of the World Health Organization. And in a letter written to Chris Whitty, which I've seen, they are calling for an urgent review of this decision and moving that 12 weeks back to six between doses. Thank you, Pim. Thank you. Well, our deputy political editor, Vicky Young, is in Westminster. And Vicky, we saw the pictures from Heathrow and Hughes report thousands of people still arriving amid concern about new variants coming from abroad. Yeah, and interestingly today, the Prime Minister talking about the measures that are already in place, saying broadly that he thought that that was enough, apart from dropping a very heavy hint about doing more to protect the borders. Now, there will be, I understand, a meeting on Monday of senior ministers to discuss this, and I think the most likely option uh, to come out of that is going to be the idea of people quarantining in hotels, something that we have seen in other countries. Now, that's the stricter measures. As for unlocking, well, the Prime Minister... Uh, today saying what he's going to be looking at before he can consider doing that. Now, one thing is to see that that vaccination programme is working very well. There has been great progress there, but he says that is not going to be enough. And it's this infection rate, which he described as forbiddingly high. That is the risk, that you start unlocking too soon and the whole thing rebounds again. So there will still be this review in just over three weeks' time. He's made it very clear schools would be the first to open but he's going to do it extremely cautiously. Vicky Young, thank you. The latest government figures show there were 40,261 new coronavirus infections recorded in the latest 24-hour period. So 38,270 new cases were reported every day on average last week. There were more than 38,500 people in hospital with coronavirus in the seven days to this Wednesday. Another 1,401 deaths were reported. That's people who died within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test. On average, in the past week, 1,241 deaths were announced every day. The total number of deaths so far across the UK is 95,981. The UK's programme of mass vaccinations continues to ramp up with a new daily record for the rollout. More than 400,000 people have had their first dose on one of, the, of one of the three approved COVID-19 vaccines in the latest 24-hour period. It takes the overall number of people who've had their first jab to more than 5.3 million. Well, the government is counting on the vaccination programme to get us out of lockdown. But there is one vital question that scientists can't yet answer. Will people who've had the jab still be able to pass the virus on? Our science editor, David Shookman, looks at the current evidence surrounding transmission. Rolling out the vaccines at a gathering pace marks the first big turning point in the pandemic, each one creating more protection against the disease. But there's something crucial we don't yet understand. If you've been vaccinated, can you still get infected? You'd be safe if that happened, but could you spread the virus to others? We don't know for sure at this moment in time whether if an individual is infected after receiving the vaccine, they can transmit that to others. So the best thing to do is to presume that it's possible so if someone is pinged because they've been in contact with somebody who has infection, then they should self-isolate in the same way that they would have to if they had not had the vaccine. We do know from the trials that the injections work remarkably well. They boost the production of antibodies that flow through the bloodstream to provide a key form of defence. So if the coronavirus does get in, the antibodies should block it from entering any of our cells. In addition to that, what are called T-cells should provide another layer of protection. But there's no guarantee that any of this will stop an infection in the upper airway, with the virus taking hold and you releasing it. There's nothing confirmed about these risks after vaccination, but it is plausible you could still get an infection without symptoms. 
That's when you don't feel ill but could still be a carrier. In that case, you'll probably have lower levels of the virus inside you than if you hadn't had the vaccine and a shorter infectious period when you're a risk to others. Even so, it is still conceivable you could spread the virus in your household, for example, to people you're close to and spend most time with. The vaccines coming off the production lines were tested for how they keep people from getting ill, not whether they'll still be infectious. So the advice is to remain careful, even though there's a good chance of a positive effect. The most likely scenario is going to be that the vaccines will reduce how much virus is in a person even if they get infected and make it less likely the person would, would pass the virus on to anybody else. And this may be relevant to the lockdown and when we get out of it. Scientists who are trying to predict the spread of the virus say it's vital to know if vaccination slows that down. If it has a significant impact on, on transmission, then we'd be able to relax measures faster than if it doesn't. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to see some relaxation, at least getting out of lockdown in the March timeframe. Um, but it will be very much a gradual process from then through to the end of the year. So how the vaccine programme goes is crucial in so many ways. First, for saving lives, but also for helping to shape the future course of the pandemic. David Shookman, BBC News.